Hi there, Whiskey Titan checking in with another guide. A lot of comments requested an overview of what to invest in when starting the game. Makes sense, after all, you don't want to waste resources on characters and gear you won't be using long term. So this video will take a look at what you might want to focus your resources towards. We'll start with the characters. At launch, there will be a total of 14 characters split into ranks B, A and S. 3 B ranks, which you get from the tutorial. 6 A ranks, you'll be getting most, if not all of them, pretty quickly once you start pulling on the character banners. The remaining 5 are S ranks. You'll be able to finish the beginner banner in the first few days of play, which will give you one random S rank. Using the S rank selector, you'll be able to choose a second S rank. The core thought in punishing is always this. What gives you the most DPS? Whatever that is, is what you want to prioritize and invest in. As you may have heard already, every character in this game is viable. If you play well, form synergetic teams, and build your units correctly, you should be able to clear most of the content and challenges the game throws at you. While a tier list might not make sense because of that, there's still meta for those who prefer to optimize. Over time, as more units are released, the meta quickly trends towards building mono teams, such as a team consisting of only damage type physical units. Often, these teams follow the MMORPG trinity of one DPS, one tank and one support, exceptions included. Because of that, units of the same damage type and role compete for spots on their respective teams. My opinion on whether the starting characters are going to have a place on any of these mono teams long term is what the following character section will reflect. With that knowledge, let's find out who stands the test of time. We'll start from the bottom of the ranks and work our way up. Surprisingly, I can recommend investing in two after three B ranks, those being B-Liv and b Nanami. B-Liv is a solid physical support at base rank. At triple S rank, which you can farm, she unlocks a passive which increases all physical damage dealt on the field by 10% while she is not on the field. At triple S, she is the default support class unit for physical teams and outclasses her S rank version in matters of support. Definitely worth investing in long term. Anatomy, a physical tank, is a bit more niche. Unlike other tanks, she has an additional armor shred on one of her skills, which enables pain cage burst strats in combination with Alpha. To be able to do this without having to restart each boss 100 times, you want to liberate slash awaken her. This though is very costly and might not be worth it for only pain cage early on. B Lucia, as the odd one out, has split damage between physical and fire, but sadly excels at neither. She's what we call a fake elemental. Fake elementals are units the game lists as dealing a high percentage of their damage in a specific element, but this ends up not being the case. B Lucia is a DPS and outclassed by most A ranks. Also, the competition for the DPS slot is the highest, not worth investing in. Moving on to the A ranks. A Lucia is a great lightning DPS, but not too long after launch, we will get the S rank Lightning DPS S Bianca, who dwarfs A Lucia. You can invest in A Lucia short term, but don't try to pull her signature weapon and don't affix the Lightning DPS at Heisen to her. She's a low priority, invest if you somehow have surplus resources. A Liv is a core part of the future Lightning team. You'll want her geared, leveled, and raised to double S rank by the third update Eternal Engine to support the aforementioned S Bianca. She's not an immediate priority, but you can't go wrong investing in her already, especially if you need a healer. A Lee is another fake elemental DPS. He only deals fire damage when attacking enemies inside his AoE damage field, which is not enough fire damage to warrant him as a fire DPS. His physical damage is also not outstanding. He's a mediocre DPS in a crowded role, not worth investing in. A Karenina is another fake elemental. This time though, you want to invest. A Karenina is a great physical DPS early in the game, makes for an excellent backup DPS for Alpha, and a great filler for any incomplete elemental warzone teams. The reason being, her QTE gathers. She's unique in that regard, and this alone makes her worth keeping around for a long time to come. 100% worth your resources. A Watanabe competes with A Karenina for the physical DPS spot at launch. Sadly, he can't measure up to the utility A Karina brings long term. Short term, there's no reason investing in a pure physical DPS with Alpha one patch away. Don't invest. A Bianca 
another physical DPS, focuses on single target physical DPS, but doesn't excel at it enough to matter. Alpha out DPSs her. Also, she has no utility. Don't invest either. And lastly, we arrive at the S ranks. For the S ranks, I'd kindly ask you to check out my S rank selector video. I go more in depth on the characters there. A few short notes though. S Lee isn't worth the resources if you plan to get alpha. You won't be building multiple physical teams, so there's no need to race both of them if you have both. You could run them together, but in my opinion, teaming up alpha with A Karina for her gathering plus a tank for debuffing is more optimal. S Nanami isn't worth building if you don't have S Karina, as she doesn't deal enough damage on her own. S Karina, on the other hand, is a solid fire DPS. In my opinion, she's only held back by the other fire units in the game. Worth investing in because she's a good DPS in her own right. If you have her and S Nanami, she's definitely worth upgrading. The fire team may be considered the weakest team in the game, but a complete team of one element is always strong. S Liv is a tanky, self healing fallback unit with decent DPS for cheesing some of the non-timed content. She's not a priority, but worth investing in if you have surplus resources. S Kamui is a core member of the Dark team and worth full investment. Since he deals great damage when played as a secondary DPS, going for a signature weapon can be considered, but it's not a priority. Next up are the weapons. Your end goal in terms of weapons is to have 5 star or 6 star weapons equipped on all your used characters. Your DPS and sub DPS have top priority on this matter. Support units and off field debuffers can be kept at 4 star weapons till after your DPS units have their 5 stars and 6 stars. 5 star weapons are obtained from the weapon gacha and co op, 6 stars are exclusive to the weapon gacha. Most players won't be pulling much outside the beginner banner because they're saving for alpha. Because of that, they won't have many 5 stars beyond what the game gives them from the tutorials. Co-op can provide you with 5 stars early, but requires a fair amount of stamina to grind out. It's usually better to focus that energy on currently ongoing events instead, because the rewards are better. As a necessary evil, you can level 4 star weapons for your DPS units until you get their 5 star or 6 star weapons. For those planning to summon for signature weapons, like Alpha Sword, I'd recommend waiting a bit and bridging the gap with 4 stars instead. Once you start summoning on the weapon banner, you'll have enough 5 star weapons to go round. There's only one 4 star and one 5 star weapon per weapon type and one signature weapon per character. So the only thing you have to watch out for is to not accidentally pull for the wrong signature weapon. To show you what I mean, let's go back to the weapon banner for a second. As you can see, there's simply no shortage of 6 star swords in the game. After all, every Lucia has one of her own. And only all the way at the bottom do we finally find Alpha's sword. Last but certainly not least, the memories. First of all, don't invest in anything below 5 star memories. As for the 5 star memories, they are for the most part placeholders for 6 star memories, so don't invest too heavily into them either. Increasing the level of memories does not strengthen the set effect. It only increases the stats gained from equipping them. So off-field tanks and supports have no priority for leveled memories. To reiterate, you prioritize your resources towards your DPS units. Now let's go over the memories, starting with the 5 stars. The 5 star support memories Groda, Richelieu, Samantha and Voltaire are all usable long term. This is because there aren't enough 6 star support memories to fill all the memory slots on a team where the tank and support are always off field and are only there to provide debuffs, buffs and healing. Keep one 2 set of the physical memories Richelieu and Voltaire and 2-3 two, two, two sets of the elemental memories Groda and Samantha around. They have no priority to be leveled. The 3 5 star DPS memories Aifu, Irwin and Echo are all placeholders for 6 star memories. Aifu is the 5 star version of Hana and Irwin the 5 star version of Barton. You'll be replacing both and neither has any long term viability whatsoever. Echo is the universal 5 star memory for all elemental units. You can slap this on any elemental DPS you have and it'll do its job. Because of this versatility, you can keep one force set around and invest into it a bit, but again, it's only a placeholder for the optimal 6 star elemental sets. The Mozart set has no use, ignore it. That's all the non-event 5 star memories. 
moving on to the six star memories. Not all of these will be available at launch. Knowing what's to come is important for deciding what to acquire and invest into though. Therefore, the six star memory section will contain the memories released in the first two patches as well. Side note, if you want to awaken slash liberate a character, you need two extra memories per memory equipped. A recommended four set means you need 12 memories of that set to awaken slash liberate the characters they are equipped to. We will start with the DPS sets in no particular order. Remember, you always want to max out DPS equipment if it's used. Hyson is the Lightning DPS set. It's the default set for A rank Lucia and later on S rank Bianca. S Bianca arrives in the patch after Dark Watanabe. You will level this set sooner or later, either now for A rank Lucia or when S Bianca arrives. You use this as a force set. Shakespeare is the fire DPS set. The only fire unit worth leveling this for is S Carolina. If you don't have her, no need to invest. Frederick is the dodge set. This is the burst set for characters with clearly defined burst windows. Piloting this set requires more game knowledge and skill when it comes to burst windows and spending your limited dodges. Great payout if played correctly. Burst Alpha runs this as a 4 set, other characters can run it as a 2 set. Hana is unique. It increases your 3 orb skill damage and gives you more of them. Very strong set, used on S Kamui and A Karina as a 4 set. Get a lot of these because Ice Lucia later on also uses this as a force set. Darwin increases your damage with skill orbs used. Your main damage usually stems from using skill orbs. Get a lot of Darwin pieces because it's faster to name the DPS that don't run this as a 2 set. Adolf decreases the amount of energy needed for signature moves, a character's ultimate, and increases energy gained from using skill orbs. Not as versatile as Darwin, but can still be used on a lot of characters. It's mandatory as a 2 set on A Lucia because she wants 100% uptime on her signature move. S Karnina can also run 2 set Adolf to great effect. Not a priority, but a nice to have set. Condolina is a very niche set focusing on basic attacks. The only relevant character that runs this is S Bianca because her core passive counts as a basic attack. Even then, it's not optimal, just the easier to play option. Optimal for S Bianca is a 2 set of Frederick. Basilone, the Dark DPS set. It's used on and released with A rank Dark Watanabe after Alpha's patch. Dark Watanabe will be the core DPS for the Dark team for a while. He's an A rank and obtainable from the patches event, so you're guaranteed to get him. You want 4 pieces of this set. Consider preparing memory level up and upgrade material before Dark Watanabe's patch drops. Barton is the set for physical DPS units and should be released together with Alpha. It's the best set for S. Lee and other physical DPS like A. Watanabe and A. Bianca. It's one of the two sets for Alpha focusing on consistent damage rather than her burst. Personally, I'd recommend playing Alpha for her burst though, so with the Frederick set. You use Barton as a 4 set. Since, as far as I can tell, there will be no physical DPS focused set at launch, I recommend using Hana in the meantime to bridge the gap. As I said before, you want a lot of Hana sets anyway. That's it for the DPS sets. The only remaining memories are healer, buffer and debuffer memories. Da Vinci is always used as a 4 set and makes the unit a QTE bot. Every 3 unit team wants a QTE bot, so you want at least one 4 set per complete team. Level this after your DPS, since the character equipped with this will QTE attack a lot. Einstein and Catherine have the same effect, but Einstein is for elemental and Catherine for physical teams. They are both used as a 2 set. If equipped on an off-field debuffer, there is no priority to raise them. Also used by secondary DPSs like S Kamui, in which case you want to level them. Get one 2 set of Catherine for your physical team, and one 2 set of Einstein per elemental team. Guinea and Ferret also have the same effect, but Guinea is for elemental healers, and Ferret for physical healers. One 2 set per healer, no leveling priority. And now, the TLDR version. For characters, invest into A Carolina, B Lif, A Lif, and B Nanami. A Lucia as well if you want to start the Lightning team early. Additionally, raise whatever S ranks you have. Only applies to S Nanami if you have S Carolina. Weapons, invest into the highest star weapon you can give your DPS. Don't bother with anything below 4 star. Memories, keep 1 2 set of the 5 star memories Samantha, Richelieu, Grodon, and Voltaire around. 1 2 set of the 6 star memories Catherine and Ferret for your physical teams. 
a few two sets of Einstein and Guinea for elemental teams. One four set of Da Vinci per team. Invest into support and healer members if you need the stats. Invest into the core DPS sets for your DPS units, as well as a lot of Darwins. Welp, that's that. Spend your resources responsibly, and as always, if you have any questions, corrections or additions, leave them in the comments below. See you all in game, Whiskey Titan, signing out.